Hi, my name is Anna Stewart and today is the 23rd of September 2013. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate airway skills that are commonly used to manage a patient's airway. The six skills I'll be going through today include uh, putting a patient in a lateral position, uh, the triple airway manoeuvre and how it differs from the sniffing position, the, the insertion of an oropharyngeal airway, insertion of a nasopharyngeal airway, use of the laryngoscope and positive pressure ventilation using a bag valve mask. I'll now demonstrate putting a patient in the lateral side position. This position is for breathing patients to maintain their airway. I have positioned myself on the preferred side at the patient's hip. I'm going to check the patient's pockets for any sharps. Uh, the first step is to extend the patient's arm at the shoulder and fold the uh, near arm across the chest. I'm going to flex the knee and gently pushing from the hip and the shoulder I'm going to push them over onto their side, making sure that the knee is made contact with the ground to prevent rolling flat. A common mistake at this time is to neglect the head, however we need to extend it and rotate it towards the ground to allow for free drainage of fluids and to pull the tongue from the back of the throat to help patency. I'll now demonstrate the sniffing position in the triple airway maneuver. The sniffing position is achieved by placing a small pillow under an adult patient's head, which helps to straighten the airway. Triple airway manoeuvre consists of three moves, the head tilt, the chin lift and the jaw thrust. Head tilt is achieved by placing the thumb on the forehead and applying gentle pressure to extend it. Chin lift is achieved by grasping the chin with the thumb and the index finger and vertically pulling it up to lift the tongue and soft tissues off the back of the throat and achieve an open airway. It also allows for a visual inspection. The jaw thrust is achieved by placing the thumbs on the cheekbones and the rest of the fingers around the man body of the mandible. Then protract the jaw up, which also pulls the tongue and soft tissues off the back of the throat. Um, help with patency. A common mistake during this skill is hyperextension of the neck, which can kink the airway and occlude it. I'm now going to demonstrate insertion of an OPA. So OPAs are used in uh, patients who are unconscious and to displace the tongue and also as a bite block for ETTs. We do not use OPAs in patients with trismus or if there is a gag reflex present. So a common mistake when inserting an OPA is using the wrong size. So we, to prevent this, we measure from the corner of the mouth down to the angle of the mandible. Using the right size ensures optimum patent airway. Um, to insert, we can either lubricate it using the patient's saliva or uh, water. I'm going to, using putting the curve upwards, I'm going to insert it halfway, and once halfway, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and bring it down to the lips. I'm going to now check for a gag reflex, and I'm also going to look, listen and feel for breathing. I'll now demonstrate the insertion of an NPA. NPA are used in unconscious patients with trismus. They are not used in patients who have middle third facial fractures or significant nasal trauma. So a common error is using inappropriate sized NPAs. So we measure it from the nostril down to the earlobe. I have lubricated this to aid insertion as well. Um, so first of all, I'm going to visually inspect the nostrils um, looking for any obstructions and then I'm going to choose the largest nostril. I'm going to put the NPA in at a 90 degree angle and I'm going to gently put it down, rotating clockwise and anticlockwise to help. If there's any resistance, I'm going to stop and I'm not going to force it down. This one is going all the way down to the bottom, which is good. And I'm going to check if there's a gag reflex and I'm also going to look, listen and feel for any air movement. I will now demonstrate the use of the laryngoscope. The laryngoscope is used in an unconscious patient to view the upper airway for any foreign body obstruction. So first I'm going to start by putting the patient in the sniffing position. Next I'm going to check the laryngoscope to make sure the bowl is tight, white and bright. Putting that on the left side and putting the suction equipment on the right side. I'm then going to use my right hand to do a head tilt. Using my left hand with the laryngoscope putting it, inserting it into the right side and sweeping the tongue over to the left. Uh, once the laryngoscope is in the molecular groove, I'm going to use an upwards and outwards motion to visualise the vocal cords and look for any foreign bodies. A common mistake at this time is the levering motion of the laryngoscope rather than up and out, causing dental damage. 
I'll now be demonstrating assisted positive pressure ventilation using a bag valve mask for the unconscious, unbreathing patient. First of all, using the appropriate size face mask, we need to achieve a seal. To do this, we roll over the nose and mouth, squeezing the cheeks in. Once a seal is achieved, we can maintain this using the C group, which involves the thumb and the index finger on the mask and the remaining fingers on the body of the mandible to help achieve a head tilt. Uh, we respirate patients for 12 to 16 resps per minute at 10 mils per kilo. For this patient, we'll be depressing the bag about one third. I'll now demonstrate 15 seconds of assisted ventilation. During this time, we'll be looking for rise and fall of the chest. A uh, common error at this time is hyperventilating patients, which can be detrimental.